In this topic, we're going to have a look at mitosis. So, by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what are the two types of nuclear division? Why is mitosis important? And what are the four stages of mitosis? Can you remember what the two types of nuclear division are? You've got mitosis, where two genetically identical daughter cells are being produced, and they contain the same number of chromosomes as their parent. And then meiosis. This is when the chromosome number has been halved, so we say that the daughter cells are haploid. So let's have a look at the definition of mitosis more carefully. It's the process by which a cell nucleus divides to produce two daughter nuclei containing identical sets of chromosomes to the parent cell. And where would you find mitosis occurring? You'd see it in the root tip, where the cells are actively dividing. Let's have a look at a question. A researcher is provided with onion bulbs, which are sprouting following dormancy. She intends to use these bulbs to study mitosis in onion cells. Which parts of the bulb are suitable for this purpose? It would be at the root tips, so two to three millimeters from the root tips. Okay, let's have a look at meiosis. Now we're going to look at meiosis in more detail at A level, but for the time being you need to understand that it's the process by which a cell nucleus divides to produce four daughter nuclei, each containing half the number of chromosomes of the original nucleus. So we also call this reduction division. And meiosis is used for the formation of gametes, for example ovum and spermatozoa in animals. Now, why is mitosis important? It results in the increase in cell number. So it allows for growth of multicellular organisms from unicellular zygotes. And this growth can be over the entire body or hyperplasia, where the cells are multiplying. It's used in the regeneration of new cells. So, for example, cell replacement means that some animals, such as planaria, can regenerate parts of their body. Repair damaged tissue. Now, cells are constantly dying and being replaced by identical cells. So, in the human body, cell replacement is rapid in the skin and the lining of the gut. If the new cells were not exact copies of the ones that have been lost, the tissue would not function as effectively as before. It's used to replace cells, for example, red blood cells. And it's used in asexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction is the production of new individuals of a species by one parent organism. Examples include the amoeba, where cell division results in reproduction, and in multicellular eukaryotes, where new individuals are produced by budding from the parent, for example, the hydra. So bacteria divide by binary fission, not mitosis. Why? This is because they don't have a nucleus. Now, in the previous topic, we looked at the cell cycle. So you've got interphase and mitosis and cytokinesis. So here you can see interphase, and in interphase you've got um, subphases, G1, S, and G2. Then mitosis is broken up into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. You can see that mitosis occurs after the second growth phase, G2 of interphase. So cells don't divide continuously. What they do is they undergo a regular cycle of division, separated by periods of cell growth. So just to recap interphase, during interphase chromosomes are long and thin, and they dispersed in the nucleus. They also consist of sister chromatids joined by a centromere. Remember that the centrioles have also replicated.
Okay, so there are four stages of mitosis. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. PMAT. Now remember that mitosis only occurs in eukaryotic cells. So it's a continuous process, but it does have four stages. You've got prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So proto a protophase. prophase is when the chromosomes become visible and the nuclear envelope disappears. Metaphase is when the chromosomes arrange themselves at the equator of the cell. So a good way to remember it would be metaphase, middle. Anaphase is when the chromatids migrate to opposite poles. And then you've got telophase, where the nuclear envelope reforms. So PMAT. So look at this diagram or picture, and we're going to have a look at another one in a moment. Okay, can you identify the different stages that I've just discussed? You've got prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay, let's have a look at prophase in more detail. Here you can see prophase in a plant cell and animal cell. So during prophase, the chromosomes shorten and thicken by spiralization. So the DNA winds around positively charged histones to form clusters, and these further interact and coil by spiralization. This means that the chromosomes can be seen under a microscope, as you can see here. Now in animal cells, the centrioles move to opposite poles of the cell, and you have asters forming. Asters are short microtubules radiating from the centrioles. And what they do is they hold the two centrioles in place at the two poles of the cell during mitosis. The nucleolus disappears, the nuclear envelope breaks down, and a spindle is formed. So the nucleolus disappears because the nucleic acids are being used. So here's quite a nice diagram to summarize what's going on. So what I would do is press pause and copy it down. It's from your Jones and Jones textbook. So here you can see the centrioles are moving to opposite ends of the nucleus or the poles. The nuclear envelope is disappearing. The nucleolus is disappearing. And you have the chromatids joined by a centromere. This shows you a spindle apparatus. So the microtubules span from pole to pole. You do see a spindle apparatus in plants, even though they don't have centrioles. So this means that the centrioles are not important for spindle formation. So out of interest, the spindle fibers originate from centrosomes in animal cells. And a centrosome is a non-membrane bound organelle and it serves the mitotic center. You might come across a word called a kinetochore. This is a protein DNA complex which forms at the centromere and it's where the microtubules attach. Okay, let's move on to metaphase. Here you can see metaphase in a plant and animal cell. What do you notice about the positions of the chromosomes? They are lined up along the equator. So we call that the metaphase plate. It's a good way to remember metaphase is metaphase middle. So at metaphase, the spindle formation is complete. The chromosomes line up around the equator of the spindle and they're attached by their centromeres to the spindle fibers. So the chromatids are at right angles to the spindle. This is a lovely photo to illustrate the chromosomes lined up at the equator. You can see the asters at the poles, and you can also identify the spindle fibers. So 
So here's a diagram from the Jones and Jones textbook, which is a nice summary of metaphase. You can see the centrioles are at either pole. The chromosomes have lined up along the equator, which we call the metaphase plate. And you have the centromeres joined to the spindles. Okay, anaphase. Here's anaphase in a plant and animal cell. So what's going on? Well, this stage is very rapid, and the centromeres split into two. The spindle fibers pull the centromeres to opposite poles, and the separated chromatids are pulled behind the centromeres. So it's kind of like this little diagram here of the two men in the boats. They're sitting back to back, and then during anaphase, they get pulled apart. So the chromatids are following the centromeres. The centromeres are being pulled along by the spindles. So another diagram from Jones and Jones textbook. The chromatids move to opposite poles, centromeres first, and then they're pulled by the microtubules. Last stage, telophase. Here you can see telophase in an animal and plant cell. So during telophase, the chromosomes have reached the poles of the cell. They uncoil and lengthen. The spindle fiber disintegrates, the nuclear envelope reappears, and the nucleolus is reforming. So here's quite a nice diagram from the Jones and Jones textbook. You can see the nuclear envelope is reforming, the nucleolus is reforming, and the chromatids have reached the poles of the spindle. So now they uncoil to form chromatin, and you might have cytokinesis occurring. This is a division of the cytoplasm, and the cell forms two new cells. Okay, let's have a look at a few questions. I want you to identify these different stages. This is early, middle, and late prophase. What about here? This is late prophase. Metaphase. Anaphase. And late anaphase. Telophase. Telophase and cytokinesis. Okay, identify the four cells that are showing the four different stages in mitosis. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Here's quite a nice summary of the cell cycle, in particular looking at what we've been through so far. So the four stages in mitosis. So press pause and examine what's going on. And here we have a summary of all the four stages, and, um, and you can also see interphase included here. So press pause and examine what's going on. And that concludes our lesson, the end.